From London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Standard. Happy International Women's Day 2024. Yes, every year on the 8th of March, people around the globe celebrate the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. It's also a chance to call for the acceleration of gender parity. There's plenty of ways to mark IWD in London, from inspirational talks to networking events and even poetry readings. And you can find out all about them on the Standard website. But probably one of the best ways to celebrate the day is by partaking in a bit of history, to take stock of just how far we've come, as well as the role London and its people have played in getting us here. Becky Laxton Bass is company director and a tour operator at Women of London. They offer numerous walking tours across London that highlight women's history that can often get overlooked. Becky, happy International Women's Day. London is a city with so much rich history. Is that the same when it comes to women's history? Yes, so um, happy International Women's Day. I think that London has been a city that's been here for 2,000 years and women have made up 50% of the population for a lot of that. So I think it is definitely rich in women's history, especially with women's movements. It's just about bringing it back into the limelight and creating more memorials and, and having a way of experiencing that history that maybe isn't as obvious as it is for other types of history. Who are some of the most important women in London's history when it comes to women's rights? I think obviously a lot of the conversations we have around women's rights come down to kind of the campaigns for the suffrage and for the vote. So, you know, we'll have like, you know, conversations about Emmeline Pankhurst, who, you know, very famously like took a more militant way of trying to get the vote. But Millicent Garrett Fawcett as well, um, who now has a statue in Parliament Square. She was a lifelong campaigner for equal rights, not just for the vote, but also for women to have better job opportunities, better, you know, kind of laws around marriage as well and how women couldn't own property if they were married and she was very annoyed about that when she got married herself. So they're probably two of the most prominent figures but there's loads of women, Josephine Butler for example, who worked a lot in kind of poorer areas. She worked towards helping kind of the most vulnerable women uh, in terms of their medical care and and housing. So yeah, I think there's a lot of great women out there but those are probably some of the more famous ones. And away from women's rights now, who are some of the most notable female Londoners in history? I mean, where do you start? There's so many. Um, I think obviously some of the ones we talk about on our walks tend to be the ones that have like memorials. So I always like to talk about kind of Virginia Woolf and her story, you know, around Bloomsbury, an area that was kind of known for more kind of bohemian lifestyle. I've also recently come across, um, or we include her on our tour, Elsa Lancaster. And she's, uh, you know, really great kind of actress who went and founded her own club. And she probably isn't as well known. You know, other women women include like Mary Wollstonecraft who was born in the East End so yeah you know loads of great women out there that you can kind of learn more about that aren't necessarily associated with women's rights but maybe writing or nursing or social reforming and campaigns so yeah there's loads of stuff out there. You have walking tours in London which showcase women's history around the capital where are some of your favorite places you highlight on your tours? So yes, we have lots of different uh, walking tours. We started with the Women of Westminster tour back in 2018, and that was to show the case the memorials celebrating women in the city. We have a tour around East London, looking at working women's history. And I think that's probably my favourite place to go and to guide, because I think we attract people from locals to, you know, tourists to student groups, because it's not often those women have stories written about them. Sometimes they don't even have plaques. And we're just kind of using buildings where they were associated with to highlight those stories. Um, You know, there's many women on that tour that don't have biographies and some don't even have Wikipedia pages just to highlight a little bit about them. So that's probably my favourite one because it feels like you're really, you know, educating and and fighting against that kind of lost voices. Um, But we also do tours around Bloomsbury, around the National Gallery, looking at female painters and also the British Museum, looking at kind of different cultures and how in ancient Egypt and India and China women were kind of commemorated um, through objects and, and stories so yeah loads of different stuff. You mentioned there are a lot of lost stories in women's history just tell us some of those that we might not have heard of. So I think one of the ones that's kind of close to my heart just because I'm working through uh, her kind of archives at Tower Hamlets is a lady called Miriam Moses who was the first Jewish mayor of London so she became mayor of Step 
Stepney back in the 1930s. And she has, you know, a tiny kind of local plaque dedicated to her. And at the time, she was very well known. So if you'd lived in East London, you know, you would have come across this woman. She lived there for over six decades. But as time changed, as the area developed, her story just got forgotten. And so at some point, someone put up this little local plaque to her. But it's, you know, not, it's not necessarily accurate. And it's like, you know, kind of just there. And so I've had the pleasure of kind of going through her story and finding more out about her and, you know, learning that she was an advocate for women's education. She was big on kind of housing. She also supported the vote for working women and was closely associated with the East London suffragettes and then you know, campaigning for working women to get the vote, not necessarily just like the upper kind of educated classes. So she's someone that I've just kind of enjoyed researching, especially because you have to go through all these archives at Tower Hamlets and they're fantastic. Um, so she's probably always one of my favourites to talk about. Let's go to the ads. After the break, why more needs to be done to celebrate women's historical impact in London. Welcome back. Still with me is Becky Laxton-Bass, Company Director and Tour Operator at Women of London. Are there any areas in London that are particularly rich for women's history? So I think obviously because of the way the city of Westminster kind of memorialises everything anyway, um, there's obviously more statues densely in that area. Um, Bloomsbury is really good because you've got more blue plaques. Camden's a really nice area as well for that. It's got more memorials and plaques. But yeah, I would definitely say that kind of like around Parliament, you have memorials to quite a lot of kind of different women. If people are looking for something to do that's a bit more visually pleasing, that's probably the area they go. And as you mentioned there, London is obviously known for having lots of historical blue plaques, monuments and statues. Which are some of the most significant ones people should look out for and what's the story behind them? Yeah, so I think one of the ones that we don't get to go to on our Westminster tour because it's across Lambeth or it's across Westminster Bridge is the Mary Seacole Memorial, which is right next to St. Thomas's Hospital. It kind of faces Big Ben. It's next to the COVID Memorial Wall. And that's one of the ones that I think if people are near the London Eye, they should always make an effort to go across to. It's one of the first memorials to a woman of colour to go up, but also it's only been there since 2016 so although her story aligns with Florence Nightingale you know she's someone who most people have heard of Mary Seacole's memorial is one that kind of commemorates this change in how we understand and what stories are coming about um, the other one is Noor Iniat Khan whose blue plaque went up during Covid so she, it was unveiled during Facebook Live kind of streamed the unveiling of it near Gordon Square in Bloomsbury and it was the first kind of memorial to an Indian woman so that's always you know kind of great to celebrate that history and I think that's something that we're seeing a lot more in the last even since I started the company you know statues and more plaques going up and the percentages are shifting in kind of like seeing more representation but it's still going to take a while to fight against the kind of you know hundreds of years of of male statues and plaques that have been going up. I remember in 2021 research found that London had more statues of animals than it did named women. Is that still the case now? And if so, does more need to be done to make sure that women's historical impact is acknowledged and celebrated? I think it probably would still be the case, although I'm not 100% sure, only because I'm not familiar with many statues that have gone up across London in the last two years. I know quite a lot of plaques have gone up. Part of the problem is uh, a lot of these statues, you know, there's ones in the East campaigning for like the Match Girl Memorial, for example. There's ones for Sylvia Pankhurst. Um, There's ones to commemorate like the women who were murdered by you know the serial killer Jack the Ripper and stuff they cost a lot of money and so there's crowdfunding being done but it can take years and years for these things to happen you need planning permission so the blue plaques are a way of kind of building awareness in a in a more affordable way and that's changing you know I think we're up to 15% of London's official blue plaques are of women and I think when I started the tours it was it was like 13% so you know it's gone up 2% in a in five years or so but statue wise you know I know there was a Virginia Woolf statue unveiled near Richmond there's been ones across the country so I know Barbara Castle had her statue unveiled in Blackburn where she was a member of parliament but in terms of London I would would be surprised if that statistic was unfortunately still accurate. As many Londoners will know, we've recently had new names for the overground lines. One of them is the suffragette line. Does that area have a lot of significance for the suffragette movement? 
Absolutely. So um, the line actually begins over in Barking, so in the east. And as I've kind of mentioned, the East London suffragettes was like a big movement. It was also very interesting because it was seen as a bit of a breakaway movement from the kind of Westminster-based campaigns. Um, and that was mainly because in the West, they kind of felt like the, the first women who were going to get the vote were always going to be the, the higher classes, the wealthy people taking, you know, kind of part of the movement. Whereas in the East, a lot of working people including working men were not actually able to vote and so the East London Federation of Suffragettes kind of wanted to like really focus on getting those working people better rights especially because they felt that working people's lives were harder because of the laws being introduced by parliament so I think it's quite fitting that it starts over in the east and is kind of not necessarily associated with the areas we tend to link suffrage to if you ask someone to name like a suffrage area they're going to think of parliament square and the famous events that happened through whitehall and trafalgar square so it's nice that it's kind of being it's kind of highlighting a different area of london that's connected with suffrage but maybe from a slightly different point of view so hopefully it opens up conversations as to why they chose to start it in the east um, and that might lead to more knowledge and, and more, more people knowing about this movement And if there's anyone listening to this who wants to take a walk over the weekend to sort of think about women's history in London in particular, is there an area that you would recommend to walk around? Oh, that's a really tough question. (laughs) Um, I guess it would always just, uh, its I wouldn't necessarily pick an area. I would just say wherever you're walking, I guarantee there's something. Even if you're not necessarily familiar with it, if you're going to explore a new area, you can always check out like what blue plaques are listed there. If there's any public pieces of art dedicated, um, you know, in street art and things like that, ways of showcasing it. So I think there's not a particular area because I think there is something everywhere in London. You know, there's walking tours that I would love to get off the ground and further the North Primrose Hill and Hampstead and Camden and places like that. There's bits down in Woolwich with the kind of factory workers. So there's loads of stuff. It's just about when you're walking around, kind of looking up and being able to actually, you know, take a minute to to see what might be there. So I wouldn't necessarily pick one, but I guarantee there's something nearby. You just need to have a little look for it. You can find out more about this story and others in the Evening Standard newspaper or on our website, standard.co.uk. And that's it from this episode. This podcast will be back on Monday at 4pm.